Saga Cigars, makers of the Saga Golden Age. The Golden Age is a cigar that takes you back to the classic days of cigar smoking. Through the six generations of experience by the Reyes family, the Saga Golden Age delivers a timeless blend that uses the nobility of the tobacco to bring you the perfect balance of power and flavor. It narrates better than words the history of a family's tradition in tobacco, delivering a cigar much like the ones they used to smoke in the times of Hemingway. Saga Golden Age is a full-bodied, full-flavored Dominican Puro. With tobaccos from one farm, the blend features a Corojo 2006 wrapper and filler from original Cuban seeds grown in the Dominican Republic. Available in four sizes at an affordable price, the Saga Golden Age is sure to please and take you back on a journey to yesteryear. M. Bombay Cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay Cigars are then rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays the detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try the M. Bombay Casera, M. Bombay Mora, and the recently released M. Bombay Habana. M. Bombay Cigars, where the cigar is a way of life. Partagas, since its introduction in 2014, Partagas 1845 Extra Fuerte has won critical acclaim and a devoted legion of fans. Flawless construction and full-bodied flavor are the hallmarks of this rich, dimensional cigar that features prevalent notes of wood and coffee. Made with a unique blend spanning three continents, Partagas 1845 Extra Fuerte is the perfect choice for any cigar smoking occasion. Cigar connoisseurs are already raving about this exquisite cigar which pays homage to Christopher Columbus's discovery of tobacco during his expedition of the New World. This medium to full-bodied cigar shows off the kind of exquisite construction expected by master blender A.J. Fernandez. This gorgeous box press cigar features a delicious dark chocolate Nicaraguan wrapper that houses a blend of Ometepe, Condega, and Esteli filler bound with a Jalapa binder. Once lit, the perfectly balanced and refined New World gives off a beautiful billow of smoke and hits you with spice and citrus flavors. As you begin to lose yourself in the rich aromas of the New World, flavors become more complex and begin to express hints of hazelnut and coffee. The New World is a first-time collaboration between A.J. Fernandez and his father Ishmael, making this cigar stand out in the A.J. Fernandez line. To commemorate the union of father and son, A.J. Fernandez is offering you this masterpiece at an MSRP of $6, unheard of for a cigar of this caliber. AJ Fernandez invites you to embark on the journey and smoke what he guarantees to be one of the most talked about cigars of the year. The New World, Cigar Journal's number one cigar of the year. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. I'm, of course, your host, Paul Sidori, and joined by Will Cooper on the lines via Skype. We're here to talk about our stogies of the week. We've got some awesome cigars to talk about, so Will, why don't you kick us off? Oh, well, wait. We, first, yep. we want yep. to do the unbanded thing. Yes, we do. Let's do it. So what are your thoughts on the cigar, Will? Um, it's a strong cigar producing a ton of smoke. Yes. Um, getting a lot of notes of, I got that... The black cherry note, mm. uh, especially in the middle, I was really getting that. Yeah, getting very some prominent. Oaky, some oaky notes, definitely some pepper. This is a full strain cigar too. It's got a lot of power to it. Um, the drawer, the drawer has been a little loose on this thing for a perfecto. Um, so it's been, and it had a, I had a slight crack in it at, uh, along the way, but it got through it. Yeah, I, I lost a, a good portion, not a good portion, but I lost some of my wrapper. It kind of cracked towards the end. Yeah. On me as well. So you kind of, when I, I said I thought I knew what this was, you get there was something you said in particular, the vein. Yes, and there was a very prominent vein in the wrapper. So when I looked at this cigar initially with that and this 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 brand, they used to have their cigars unbanded and then they started banding them. I began to think Edgar Hoyle. Mm-hmm. However, the cigar is too strong. And I don't think it's the right size for an Edgar Hoyle. And I don't think it tasted like the Edgar Hoyle EH. So I don't think it's that. Yeah, I, I, I can't even place this cigar. I don't know if I could tell you. Um, it's definitely a Maduro or a Scoro type wrapper on it. 
It definitely is, but I, I don't I, think it's I don't, a, I don't think it's a Connecticut. I'd be surprised if it was Connecticut Broadleaf. It doesn't say anything like Connecticut Broadleaf. No, I mean, it, it, or a San and, or a San Andreas either. I mean, it looks like a Nicaraguan Habano wrapper on the thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as fillers and things like that, I, I'm not I'm not exactly sure. I think the um, the nice part about this cigar wheel is I think the flavors that we're getting that we're describing are mostly coming from the wrapper. The wrapper flavors are very <clears throat> are very prominent for me. I mean, just looking at this wrapper um, and getting those kind of like dark fruit notes to me that that flavor comes from this wrapper would be my guess. Um, Maybe some of the what did you say? There's some earthy notes to it. I would agree it's, with that. That's probably some filler. Notes, some f- that's filler tobacco giving you those earthy notes. That wrapper, I think, is producing that dark, dark fruit sweetness. Yeah, but there's definitely lajero in this thing. I mean, mm-hmm. there's definitely a lot of lajero. I'm getting yeah, out of it. Full, full flavor, full bodied cigar. Yep, yep. But so, I have no, I have no guess what it could be. So what was it? All right. Let's do the reveal. Thank you, Seth, for sending us Thank the cigar. You, Seth. Yeah, I like this cigar. What is your rating on this cigar before we do the uh, unveiling? Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go box split. Yeah, I would say box split. I think you could. Uh, it's got some aging potential, which for me kind of bumps that. Uh, you know, if I was in between a fiver and a box split, I would go box split because I think it has some serious aging potential. Pulling up the blend here right now. All right. <laughs> oh, so close. You so were close? close. I was close. But, okay. It is an Edgar Hoyle cigar. And Edgar Hoyle is made where, Will? But it's not Edgar Hoyle's cigar. All right, so Edgar Hoyle makes his cigars at CLE. Yep. But this was the cigar Edgar Hoyle did with Matt Booth. This is the Room 101 Osak. Oh. I complete. I was in the ballpark. So it's a what well, you were. That was good, Will. I'm impressed. That's the closest I've ever come. But now the Osak is Edgar Hoyle's blend. Well, he got to take the Osak name with him. This is the Room 101 Osak. Oh. This was a one-time limited release three years ago. I gotcha. So the, yeah, Seth must have had these things sitting in the in his in a humidor vault probably to pull these out. Um, so it's already got some aging. It's got it's got a lot more leg to it as far as aging goes in my. Oh, in my three, book, I, yeah. I would never throw it was this. That's why it was there was a lot, and that is a strong cigar. It's an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, mm-hmm. a Honduran Corojo binder, and Corojo and Piloto Lajero uh, from Honduras and, and the Dominican. So, so we yeah we we kind of we picked apart the blend. I mean, I we told you what it wasn't in terms I, of the I, wrapper. I, yeah, like I said, I looked at that vein, and that's just the and I, I have a picture of I'm looking at an old picture of an Osak. It has that vein running. Yeah, so it's just that's what I've seen on Edgar's cigars. If you look at the the stuff he's doing now, it's the same thing. That, that he's arte- it's an artesian perfecto with a vein. Nice. This was a good one. This was good. This was good. That's a good unbanded. Thank you, Seth. Yes, thank you, Seth. This was an enjoyable cigar. I've always liked the O's. I haven't smoked one of these probably in about two years. So nice. I, it wouldn't have come back to my memory. Later. I haven't smoked a whole lot of the Edgar Hoyle stuff. So you know. It's been most of the stuff he's come out with. It's been fiber. Mm. It's, there's nothing that's been bad. I just I'm waiting for that breakthrough cigar for him. Right. But I haven't smoked the IPCBR stuff yet. The Honduran stuff he's come out with. So we'll okay. see. Well, we smoked uh, from the same line. Uh, well, same line, different years. Mm-hmm. I want to start there. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Because we had different for- we had different experiences, but it turns out we smoked slightly different cigars from the same line. Yeah. You want me to go first, or you go? first? Yeah, I want you to go first. Okay. Um, we smoked. This was kind of a an interesting. This is a cigar that is uh, made by a company called Royal Agio Cigars. Uh, it's it's called the Balmoro Añejo. I smoked the Balmoro Añejo EXO. You smoked the Balmoro and Yeho 18. Let okay. me let me tell. Let me oh, tell you I think th- I might have labeled it wrong. Well, we gotta fix that. Okay. So I smoked the XO. You smoked the 18. Um, which is the difference with the two is that the um, it's it's basically both of them use a Brazilian wrapper. Mm-hmm. But uh, what happened is they ran out of the wrapper for um, the, the 18. 18. I got. Now that to keep the line going, they've swapped and put a different wrapper on there. 
Um, I smoke the Rothschild Massivo, which is a 5x55. <clears throat> mm-hmm. um, it's a Brazilian sun-grown wrapper, Dominican Olor binder, and a uh, filler of Brazilian, Nicaraguan, and Dominican. Uh, it's made out of the Dominican Republic, and it is um, distributed by Drew Estate. Now, now, Will, the binder and filler, is that the same for the yeah. XO and the 18? It was on... The, if you look at it from an architecture standpoint, the tobaccos seem to be sourced from the same areas. Whether it's the same tobaccos, I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. But they're using, like, on the, uh, the 18 is using this, uh, an Olor binder and the, uh, the Brazilian, Nicaraguan, and Dominican filler. But the big difference is the Brazilian wrapper is a different Brazilian wrapper altogether. It's a, di- it's a different Brazilian wrapper altogether. Um, yours is out of Paraca, minus, uh, they say it's a sun grown. Okay. But I don't know if it's an Araparaca sun grown. That they haven't been real clear on that. And these are higher price tag cigars. I mean, they 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 go around ten dollars. Oh, okay, so they're not I think, that. I high. think the, I think the XOs are a little less expensive because of the wrapper. So the XO, I know the one I smoked. Um, it had a. It wasn't a cheap cigar, and I bought this cigar by the. I bought these guys. I paid nine ninety for a five by fifty five, which I don't consider a cheap cigar by any means. Right, right, yeah, but they're not in the twenty or thirty dollar price range. No, they're they're not in the twenty. Or 30, but I think yours may have been, and I have I I don't have the price on that handy. But I think the one you smoked, the eighteen, is a uh, a little more expensive. Okay, because uh, that was a more limited wrapper. Yeah, uh, and you and the and packaging you, certainly uh, is very nice on this cigar. The bands are nice, very yeah. The bands look like it's a more expensive cigar, in my opinion. Yeah. It does, and um, it's an interesting offering by, you know, and it's part of the Drew Estate portfolio. They seem, this cigar, you know, Hoya is distributed by Drew Estate, and they, mm-hmm. they seem to really get that one in there. The, Drew Estate's had these Balmorals for about 18 months. They still really haven't, I think, gotten these into the portfolio, but it's still young in the process. I, I don't want to be too hard on them with that. Now, these are, is tobacco source from Davidoff on this? Was there a tie to Davidoff on this line or no? That I don't know. Okay. I don't, I don't, I have not heard that. It's, yeah, I have not heard that. Okay. Um, but I don't know that. But I, I don't know where they're sourcing their tobaccos from. These cigars were, were sold in Europe, the, particularly the Anioa 18s, and mm-hmm. then Drew Estate brought them. Uh, actually, okay, here's the tie. Davidoff used to distribute these guys. Oh, that's, that's what that's, it was. So, so there could okay. be a tie-in. Yeah, Davidoff used to distribute them, then Drew Estate took over the distribution. And that was like at IPCPR last year. Yeah. That that um, Drew Estate started distributing them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the time. Uh, yep. So, what did you think of this cigar? You're skirting the issue. Well, I know you are. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna, <laughs> all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be very blunt here. This cigar started off real good. Okay. It actually had real potential. Um, I'm gonna preface this by saying I didn't think the 18 was a great cigar, but I didn't think it was a bad cigar either. But this cigar started off nice. It started off with some of these cocoa notes, right? Nice inherent sweetness, a little earthy quality. And then this cigar just spiraled downward. Um, it just got bland and spicy. So basically, I was getting spice and basically a lot of these bland earth notes. Mm-hmm. Um, towards the end, I don't want to say it was a harsh end, but it was really uh, a bland end with spice. Just picture getting like spice and blandness. Okay? Right. And it didn't taste young. It's like when you put hot sauce on plain rice. Right. right. Yeah. Right. You, you, yeah. There's no. There's no balance there. There's just you know. There, there was yeah. no complexity with this cigar. Like I said, it started off real, but the potential was there. I'm like, wow, this is starting good. Um, but by the time I got to the second, third, it just and I was hoping it would come back. I was waiting for it to come back. It wouldn't. Construction was fantastic on this cigar. Um, I can't complain about about that. But you can't you can't score a cigar. I mean, it was great burn I got on, but you can't score a cigar because it burns good. Right. I, I I thought the flavor was was not good. Um, I reviewed this cigar. I gave it an angler. Um, wow! And you you yeah. typically don't. Most of our cigars fall between fiver and yeah. and box worthy, right? Well, the the yeah. higher and lower end rankings are typically in the minority. What I found amazing, yeah, yeah. So what I found amazing is, twenty four hours later, I see text messages on my phone from Drew Estate. Mm-hmm. They're marketing people, not happy about the review. Now, they didn't, they didn't, I don't want to say, look, I don't want to say, they didn't 
scold me or anything. They were kind of saying they think I didn't get it right. Okay. Which they're certainly entitled to the opinion. They have offered a chance for me to smoke this cigar again. Um, I haven't made a decision on that if I'm, if I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do, I do appreciate that. I, I, I got to make this comment. You know, I, look, Drew State's done some great, they've made some great cigars, they've distributed some great cigars. Every one of them isn't going to be great. There's going to be a miss from time to time. This mm-hmm. is a miss. You know, we've, I, in my opinion, over the years, Drew State's gotten a lot of good press. It's unfortunate that this is the first time I hear back from Drew Estate ever on any coverage I've given them. Mm. That it's, so I really would have loved to say, hey, we love the review you gave on, on, on some of those legal providers. And, you know, no, no, I, this is the one they, they chose to kind of come back to me on. So that's just about, you know, my editorial on that is, uh, you know, they certainly have a right to come back and question what I said, but disappointing that that's when I have to hear back from them too but no, you can't love every cigar you I don't can't. you can't and what's yeah. interesting Will, is anytime uh, I try and smoke the, the same cigars that you do I mean pretty regularly right right so that right. we you get two people's opinions at least right. of the cigar especially right. the ones that you rate really uh, you know the lower end of the spectrum or on the higher end of the spectrum I try and smoke and we disagree. You know, I mean, this, this, and, and there has this, been disagreements, yeah. right? Now, typically, this the ratings... This especially, we have a bunch of disagreements. I'll tell you that, yeah. Well, now, I... And, well, I do that for a lot of reasons, right? right? And when you rate a cigar really high, I'm like, well, I got I to gotta try that cigar. Because if Will really liked it, chances are I'm going to really like it. And that's not always the case. Not always the case, no. And same thing on the lower end of the spectrum. A lot of times, I'll, I'll differ. But, I mean, it's rare, Will, that... You rate a cigar oasis, and I rated an angler, or vice versa, right? right? I mean, typically we're not that far off uh, on our ratings. We'll be Even off, but yeah. on a scale point or two, like you'll rate it an angler, I might rate it a fiver. You rate it oasis, I might rate it a box worthy or Chuck Norris kind of thing. That's right, usually how it goes. Week, the HR was a good example last week. I don't think we were off on that. No, you, know, I had just, it as you liked you it had more than I. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But now I did the uh, the Balmoral. And yeah, 18 Torpedo MK52, and I thought this was a good cigar. There were some really interesting herbal notes in this cigar, Will, that kind of changed up as you smoked them. Uh, it was a very medium-bodied profile and had some really nice flavors, a very touch of spice. I found this one. Now, this has been sitting in my humidor for a year, and this is the original wrapper. Um, the spice was dialed down from when I remember smoking it, so it definitely settled down after a year of age in my humidor, but this was a fiver for me. I thought it was a good cigar. I'll make another comment, too. The, the XO is a much stronger cigar strength-wise and body-wise, too. Okay. Now, it could be because it's newer, um, but I did notice that, too. So there's a, there's a difference. Now, maybe if that cigar is – I just – the way – because I wasn't getting anything flavor-wise, I don't know if this XO putting it down is going to be the answer. I can't say that. Right. All I can say is the two I smoked – were were consistently what Stogie say I say consistently not not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I've smoked the eighteen. I think the eighteen I had is somewhere between a try one and a fiver. And mm-hmm. I thought that was a good cigar. I thought that was a, you know, certainly when you go into try ones and fivers, that's not a bad cigar. Right. Interesting. Well, I'm glad we got that out of the way. Yeah, sorry, Drew Estate. It's just, it happens. <clears throat> That's right. Yeah. I mean, we have to give honest and fair reviews it, yeah, here on I the show. Yeah, I can't love every, Steve Saka told me, you cannot love, you, you cannot like any every cigar because then you don't love a cigar. Right, exactly. And there's some great cigars they've made, so certainly they have a great track record. All right. Well, let's talk about another cigar that you uh, reviewed, Will. Okay. Um. This is a cigar. I actually went back into the Stogie Geeks archives, and it was another one you didn't like, I believe. Oh, it really? Tat- it was the Tatawai Anarchy. The original Tatawai Yeah, Yeah. You, Anarchy. Yeah. This is the redo. Okay. I heard the redos are better. I See, I, okay. The redos are very good. I've always liked the old one, though. But, you know. Yeah, I wasn't uh, a big fan of the old one. I remember you weren't a big fan of the old one. Um, the, the, I thought the, I, there was a point with those old ones. They aged. Yeah. I bought a bunch of them. They aged and they reached an apex in about two I heard, years. I heard that too. Then they started to level off again. So I couldn't do a really a side by side comparison with this um, because this is a new release. It's the same blend, but they talk a little when this is a smoke in exclusive. Mm-hmm. So by Tatawai, so it's a shop exclusive of smoke in. Um, but they talked about how they had to re- 
reconstruct this blend, which is telling me they use the same tobaccos, but maybe they're different farms or different vintages. Uh, but it's the same tobacco components. Um, Edicarori Habano wrapper over Nicaraguan binder and filler. It's at six and an ace by 48, 52 Solomon. So it's a nice, it's a smaller Solomon. Um, overall, I thought it was a, a really good cigar. It had uh, a lot of nice cocoa notes, earth, natural tobacco sweetness. It has this like raw sugar cane note, which, I, which is something that reminded me of the old one as well. Um, I thought it really, um, I thought it really burned well. Um, I thought it was a medium to full and strength and body. Um, I was a little surprised that it seemed like it was a little dialed back from the original Anarchy, but not by much. Uh, but mm-hmm. it was certainly a really <clears throat> good cigar. Um, and uh, I gave it a box-worthy cigar, a box nice. of 15. I like, I like this cigar. Um, I'll say this. I don't know if, if you didn't like the original Anarchy. I don't know if you're going to like this. It's mm-hmm. not that far off from the original Anarchy. I'll say that. Okay. Um, but what I want to see now is I want to get a box of these, and I want to age them like I did the old Anarchies. And see, and what they see do. if they get to that epic yeah. point. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, Will. In a, a previous segment, we were talking about um, how you don't want to review a cigar while you're doing something else and not in the right setting. Right. Uh, and I didn't put the cigar on my list because I smoked it. I lit it up while I was on a conference call um, with Hong Kong. So it was, you know, later at night for me, which was early morning for them. Um, and then after my conference call, I was, you know, doing some stuff around the house, you know, running my miter saw and stuff like that. So I was, I didn't want to light up anything uh, spectacular. I kind of just want to light something up. Because uh, I didn't know how long my conference call was going to be, kind of thing. So I lit up one of those uh, hey, Jay Fuego, Jesus Fuego. I say that right? Jesus Fuego. The ones Fuego. that come in the paper uh, packaging. The Origins. The Origins, thank you. Uh, and it was the Origin with the lighter yellowish kind of packaging. And these are, um, what do you call those where they're cut already on both ends? Cheroots. Yeah, they're kind of cheroot, yeah. They're kind of cheroot-like, but it's kind of like a perfecto, too, um, where it tapers uh, its smaller ring gauge in the uh, foot of the cigar. It gets a little fatter, and then it tapers off a little towards the head of the cigar. This is a great cigar to smoke while you're doing something else, right? Like I said, I was on a conference call, and I was doing some, like, woodworking, and, you know, I I just I wanted to have a cigar, um, and you don't have to worry about cutting it. You know, they light up real easy. Uh, so it's a nice on-the-go while you're doing something else kind of cigar. And the flavors, will I have to say, this was a very enjoyable cigar. I kind of wish I had been in a better setting to sit down and really enjoy it. I, I mean, this is, you know, buy a pack of these. You know, they come in packs of five, I think. Uh, this is, you, you got to have a pack or two of these in your humidor for those times when you're in the car. It's a great driving cigar. Um, you know, it doesn't come in a lot of your attention, but you get great flavors for it. This is a, I was really impressed. Now, these have been sitting in my humidor for a, a year or two, right? Um, so they, they have a little age, which I recommend that you do. So I would buy a couple of packs, put them down for a little while, and then when you're on the go, definitely pick one of these up. Fantastic cigar. I want to go yeah. smoke another one, Will, and do a full, uh, a full review on it. That's so how much I liked of- it. It's kind of like an angler, but it's something you may recommend beyond because the angler was kind of you were doing it while doing something, but right. yet it's something you might rate beyond an angler, so you didn't score it an angler. Does yeah, exa- exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's one of those scores that really surprised me this week. And again, I didn't do a full review because I I, felt I couldn't really do it justice. But um, as much as I was enjoying it while I was doing other things, I was like, this is a really good cigar. Right. Right. Exactly. <clears throat> um. So, and in terms of ones that I reviewed, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Avo Synchro Nicaragua Special Toro. Um, we talked about that in a Stoy Geek short. I agree that these are box worthy. Will this is a fantastic cigar, great flavors, and what I loved about it was it's a sixty ring. Is it a true? Is it sixty ring? Do they call it it's sixty a, ring? It's a sixty. <clears throat> it it smokes more like a fifty eight ring. It feels more like a fifty eight ring gauge because of the box press on it. Yep. But the flavors in the cigar are fantastic, and it smokes pretty fast for a larger ring gauge. Like, you don't feel like you're smoking it forever um, kind of thing, and it doesn't get hot, but yet it burns pretty quick. 
Um, great, easy smoking cigar with great flavors. And I agree with your box. I had rated it box worthy as well. I think these are box worthy. Yeah, it, we, 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 I encourage folks to watch that Stogie Geek shorts because, you know, I talked about it, I believe it was last week, and I was real, and then we did a shorts on it. I was just real, I didn't expect that because they weren't bad cigars the other sizes. They just didn't have that box worthy quality where I actually went and got a box of these now. Um, they would act good. Yeah, and I'm trying to coach people, and I want our listeners to know this too. Um, I was reinforcing this with Brenda next door. <coughs> um who can be a little set in her ways. Uh, and I was this way too. And I think, you know, a lot of the cigars that we, uh, that we smoke, like this one uh, was, was uh, you know, given to us by Havana Cigar Club. They have the cigar. You can call them up. Uh, Havana Cigar Club uh, here in Warwick, Rhode Island. Uh, and they have these available. Um, now, we get a lot of cigars to review, right? So we kind of have the liberty. We don't always... Sometimes we do we take money of our pockets to buy a cigar to review. A lot, of, you know. Sometimes we don't, um, and that varies greatly from week to week, certainly. Uh, but we have more of the luxury of smoking different sizes in a blend. And this, to me, was a prime example of well, if you don't like one size, go try another size. Now that's I think easier for us to say because a lot of times we'll get you know we can get a line sampler or we can go to a uh, you know cigar sales representative here locally or the manufacturer and say hey give us you know a couple different sizes and we find the one that we like uh, consumers don't always have that luxury and i think that's the service one of the services we provide to the cigar smoking community is we're going to try and smoke all those different sizes this was a real eye opener for me will in forcing me to want to go smoke other sizes in a blend. If I don't like a particular size, I'm going to try another one. And um, certainly the uh, AJ Fernandez uh, New World Connecticut was one that was like that for me. That Corona size is off the charts. I don't like the other sizes as much, but that Corona size really does it for me. And you know, I was trying to uh, explain to Brenda that you really got to try other sizes. Like if you tried one size in a blend, don't dismiss it immediately. You have to go out and try other sizes. And it's not in everyone's cigar budget to go do a line sampler of every new cigar that comes out. I totally get that, right? Yeah. And I think that's one of the um, values that we give to people who read cigar-coop.com or, or listen to the show is we've got this tag. And I want to start using this tag more, Will, the bell of the ball. We have right. gotten away from it. So Mark yeah. Jr. came up with that. Mark Jr. came up with that, and I've been tagging my cigars that I truly think are the bell of the ball, which means it's the best size in that line, in our opinion. And you may have a different opinion than us, but at least we're giving you our opinion. And a lot of times we'll agree. Will and I agree on the Avo Synchro. We agree on the New World Connecticut. Um, and especially you know, when multiple people from the Stoke Geeks agree that that's the best size in the line, we're helping you focus your budget on a cigar that we think you're going to like. Exactly. So, that's yeah, exactly. just kind of my spiel on that. Yeah, it's a, exactly. That was one uh, of the reasons why. I knew we did a whole Stogie Shorts on this, but that's one of the reasons why I wanted to put it in this week to underscore that point that, um, <clears throat> you know, trying different sizes. Size matters is what we're saying. Yeah, size matters, yeah. But I, I understand whatever they were trying to get with that. Av- I was questioning what they were trying to get with it, and I see what they what they did with that big one. I, I would, if you're not a big ring gauge smoker, and Brenda on that show was very clear, she's not a big ring gauge smoker. And she liked really that liked cigar. That, she liked yeah. that cigar. Yep. 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 <laughs> yeah, and Brenda can be very picky too. She has a great palate. Um, oh, absolutely. And so when you know she puts her stamp of approval on it, it's probably something you're gonna like. Yep. Uh, exactly. <clears throat> Back to you, Will. Um, cigar. We've kind of. I don't think we've talked about this one, um, but we've talked a bunch of them. This is the. Uh, Nesta Miranda Collection, uh, Dano Habano. Yeah, I think uh, I, I think this is the only one I haven't smoked, Will. Yep, I hadn't smoked this one yet either. Um, and I'll say this of the you know, so this is the Dano size. It's a seven by fifty six limited size that they've done for this year. Um, it's based on the Nesta Miranda Collection Habano blend. It's a Nicaraguan binder and filler with a combination of Nicaraguan, Honduran, and Brazilian. Uh, Tobacco's in the filler. Um, did I say that right? Nicaraguan wrapper and binder, and then Nicaraguan, Honduran, and Brazilian filler. Okay. Um, seven by 56. Um, of, of the three blends in the, that's the Miranda collection, um, the Habano's probably the one that, probably by, uh, it's number three of the three. Um, it's, it's not a bad cigar. Um, 
and I've kind of found that that carried over with the uh, the Dano. Uh, good cigar. It's got some nice sweetness, some cedar notes, a uh, little some definite nut flavor you'll get. You get a nice fruit flavor that's slight in the background. Um, good cigar. I mean, it just it burns real well. Um, it's a it's this started out a lot milder though than the Habanos, the regular Habanos did in the Robusto. This was almost like a mild to medium it started out before mm-hmm. going to medium strength. Same with the body. The body started out in that medium range and it went to medium to full. It's definitely a, a not, and I think it's the bigger size that may be taking that down a bit. Um, so it's a little more dialed back. Um, it's not a bad cigar. I'd still go for the, the other size Danos before this one. Um, I gave it a fiver. I, I, it's not a bad cigar. It's, 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 you know, since he's a limited, uh, I can see myself smoking these from time to time and keeping them in my humidor. Yeah, so. I, I really liked the Connecticut and the Maduro offerings in this line. In fact, I, if I had to pick my favorite, and I haven't smoked the Habano yet, but of the two, I really liked the Maduro a lot. Me too. Me it's too. tough for I me to pick between the two because Connecticut was really good. I thought the Maduro had a little better flavor profile. They kept your attention a little more than the Connecticut. It was a little more well-balanced, I thought, in the Maduro. Um, I think your review of the Habano, Will, is probably spot on from what I've read and what I've heard from other people uh, about the Habano. Again, not a bad cigar. Um, you end up comparing it to the other Danos, right? And, um, you know, people speak, uh, I think, pretty highly. I think the Maduro is a clear winner uh, of the Danos. Yeah, I think it's a clear winner of the Danos. I actually think with the with the regular line, I may put that Connecticut very, you know, I could put that, that Connecticut's very good in the uh, mm-hmm. booster size. Yes. Um, I smoked a cigar that I have to send to you, Will. I've got a bunch of cigars to send to you. I just I keep collecting more cigars to send to you, so I keep waiting. I just need to pull the trigger <laughs> and, and get you get you out of package. I have one of these for you to smoke and review. This is the Davidoff Las Vegas 15 Years. Oh, the one. <laughs> yeah, and uh, have you smoked this before, Will? No, I got one. You that had was... one, but it, it got ruined in your humidor by accident. It was the uh, the famous mold story. Yeah, fell, that fell victim to the famous mold incident of 2014. Yeah, uh, but uh, so you haven't smoked one of these before that? I have not smoked it yet. No. Okay, this is one of those ones, Will. That's classic Davidoff, right? Has that awesome herbal note, a little bit, you know, that touch of grassiness to it that dissipates after the first third. Very, very smooth, creamy. Great flavor, uh, flavor profile, um, kind of like a hay coupled with a little bit of sweetness. Not great in the final third. Um, you know, it turned a little bit sour. I wouldn't say it's horrible in the final third, but it kind of did that Davidoff kind of funky thing in the final third. But the first two thirds were so good um, that I still rated it box worthy. I thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. You gotta yeah, like w- you gotta like Davidoff if it for it to be or you know worthy of that box worthy rating and I, I I like the the flavor profile I think it was a little more amped up than some of the regular Davidoff blends um, and uh, they did a great job with it and that's not got a that's not got a light price tag on it either by the way no and I'm saying you know my rating is box worthy but really my recommendation is if you have these available I'm glad you brought that up Will yeah. Uh, and you can go buy them, you know, buy one and smoke it and enjoy it. And, um, you know, you're probably not going to go back and buy a whole box of them. But I well, think you might. You, you might, might. If you really like it. Right. And, you know, hey, this is something that we say if you really like it, you maybe you would go back and, and say I'll pop the money down for it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my assessment on that one. Okay. I'm curious to see what you think when you smoke it. Well, I can't wait. Yeah. Back to you. Um. I did a couple of uh, Blind Man's Puff Review cigars, so these are kind of a little, maybe a few weeks old, but I wanted to talk about them because they got published. Um, this is a, the first one I'm talking about is something called the, Mor- the Morero Tico Pigtail. I had not smoked this cigar before, so I had no idea what I was smoking. Um, it turns out it's a cigar made in Costa Rica by uh, someone named Joel Vasquez Morero. Um, it's got an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, an Indonesia binder, and a Costa Rican uh, filler. Um, it was re- so there were they got a bunch of online guys who reviewed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the names who were on there were folks may know um, Rob from Cigar Federation, uh, Eric from Stogies on the Rocks, and our buddy Dave Burke. Um, Dave Burke and Eric from Stogies on the Rocks love this cigar. 
Really? Yeah, they gave it a 95. Because you didn't, it didn't, doesn't look like from our rating system, Will, you liked it very much. Um, yeah, <coughs> Rob had it lower than me. He, he, it came out to an 85, it came out to an 88 on their rating. I had it as a try one. Mm-hmm. I just, I didn't find it to be an overly complex cigar. It, it, the flavors did work well together. Um, it, it, you know, it, it didn't really wow me, per se. I know some of the guys really liked it. I didn't. It had some woody notes in there. Um, you know, a little bit of cocoa and natural tobacco. It wasn't a... Um, I, was, I was a little surprised, though, that this was a... How much body was on this cigar for something with an Indonesian binder and an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper and Costa Rican filler. That's what's... The, because when I, look at, when I looked at the blend on this thing and... Ecuador and Habano and Indonesia just typically lead to something very, very mild. And most of the guys had this cigar in the medium to full, medium strong range. Um, so I was a little surprised to hear that that was the blend. But it's a try one. Like I said, you know, there's other guys who had some other thoughts. And that's what's really cool about the blind reviews is how people, how people think it. But I wouldn't say it's something I would love or go back to. Try it and see what you think. Excellent. Wasn't Balmoral? Wasn't quite the Balmoral level. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I smoked. What else did I smoke this week? I talked about the Auto Synchro. Um, oh, I smoked a really interesting one, and I, I actually I posted this one today because I thought it was pretty unique. This is the Angelinos Robusto Gordo JM. I picked this oh. up. At, yeah, I picked this up at Casa Fuente, Will, when I was there um, uh, last yeah. month, and I'd never seen the cigar before. Uh, it turns out a few people have uh, reviewed the cigar, and I want to say it came out or debuted in 2011. That sounds about right. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, because it says 2010 on the band, so some of the reviews I was seeing were dated 20 uh, 2011. Yeah. Um, this was a good cigar. It was on the milder side. Certainly, uh, it's not going to overwhelm you with strength by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but there's some nice wood notes and some nice creaminess, creaminess. Now, the price kind of leaves much to be desired. This is a higher price tag stick. I don't think it can quite demand the uh, price tag that they've set on this particular cigar. But it was a very, very good cigar. Uh, it was definitely all about flavor. Like You, you had to really pay attention to pick up. Uh, those wood notes uh, and that little bit of sweetness that you got off of the, you know, kind of a, with a creamy component to it. Very, very good cigar. Again, I'm not sure it commands the price tag uh, that they put on it. As, uh, I want to say these are, what, around $20 or so, Will, or in that kind yeah. of price range? They're in that price range, Because this yeah. is like a Fuente thing that they did with like a Prometheus. Well, I got it at Casa Fuente, so it's, it's definitely distributed through uh, Fuente. Yep. Yeah, I think they're, they may be through Prometheus. Too. Yes, I think I'm not a hundred. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that one. Yeah. Um, so my rating list was a fiver. I think you can find it. You know, if you're at Casa Fuente, you might want to pick one up, or if you find one, uh, you might want to pick one up uh, and try it. Interesting. Something different. Yeah, I smoked it. I've smoked that before. It's a good cigar. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is good. Like I said, it it doesn't. Uh, I don't think come in the price tag. There's some other ones in that price range from Fuente that I think are much better. Yep, I uh, I would agree. Back to you, Will. Um, uh, so I smoked uh, another blind review, um, and this one is <laughs> this is the riot. <laughs> um, See, I told you it was going to be a a riot and a pigtail. A pigtail, yeah. So uh, if you want to predict a riot, here here's it's going to be because uh, I'm going to throw no- two anglers in one week. <laughs> oh, this was another I'd... angler. Good <laughs> lord. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Will. And these were both the collaborative reviews from uh, uh, Blind Man's Puff. Blind Man's Puff, yeah. Uh, this is called the Riot 55. It's a uh, cigar made for Stogie Boys, which is an online retailer. Um, so the thing is, I looked at this cigar when I got this. is This has got to I get this cigar from, from Aaron, and it's got a chisel tip on it. Oh, yeah, right? I see that now. Yeah, and, and if you if you click on the link in the feed, it will take you to the the Blind Man Puff guys have some really good photos of that. Um, and I looked at, I'm like, are they giving me a chisel to review? It was all I kept because I had not seen anyone else use the chisel head before. Is it have in a fact, slight I, box press towards the foot? 
slight box press, yeah. Okay. Slight box press. Uh, it's a 5x54. Um, it's a Mexican San Andreas wrapper, Indonesian Sumatra binder, and Brazilian Matafina, Pennsylvania Broadleaf, and Dominican Peloto in the filler. Um, and this cigar just like... It, it, had some, it had its moments, okay? It, it had some... It had a, it had some some of that you know you got some coffee notes early on but eventually it, it like it got very one dimensional and it just didn't do much very earthy um, the construction was not good on this cigar um, this was this was some pretty I would say the construction was was subpar um, I had some burn issues I had some crack issues along the way um, and you know, there was, like I said, no complexity on it. It's not a chisel. <laughs> um, so, again, we, there were four of us who reviewed it. Rob and I had it at 85 on their scoring system, so we were kind of in sync on it. Um, I gave it an angle. I just, you know, it's a 675 price point. I could find plenty of 675s. I didn't know the price point. Like, I angled it after I saw what the rating, you know, saw, saw what the price was, not what the rating was. I, mm-hmm. I knew all along it was probably an angler. Um yeah, stick to the chisel. That's what I'm going to tell you. I think it's the first time I've ever given two anglers in one week. That's impressive, Will. It, yeah, you uh, gotta have. Well, yeah. you know, it shows <clears throat> honest reviews, man. You gotta, you gotta yeah, be. Try one. Yeah, like I said, we. Yeah, did, you said, um, can, you said most of the cigar was still one dimensional, and it didn't give me a lot in the way of complexity. That's yeah. not a shining, happy, glowing review. <laughs> and that was the problem with the Balmoral. I mean, that was mm. the same problem with the Balmoral is, uh, you know, when I kind of look at the I, complexity could sometimes save a score, in my opinion. Um, it can, because it, it keeps it, your attention. And, and I think it, that's a that's an integral part of it, right? Yeah, this one. And there was some poor construction, which contributed to this one, too. Um, it wasn't quite lawn multis. It had its moments. I mean, if it has no moment, like typically a lawn multi, in my opinion, would be if it didn't have any moments and the construction was bad. Mm-hmm. Then I'm just gonna do a Stogie Santa throat off the boat. I wasn't quite ready to do it, but there was a point in this cigar. I'm like, I just want to get this review over with because this is, I'm not enjoying this. Yeah, yeah. And those ones for Blind Man's Puffman, you gotta you gotta smoke every bit of it. Yeah, I mean, you do. They they're very thorough in what they ask for with that. I enjoy doing, and they're a blast to do. Mm. So, yeah. This next cigar I smoked, Will, is interesting. Um, after I started smoking a little bit, I just I had to go read some of the reviews, uh, and, and people were trashing the band on the cigar, and and I think that's unfair. Um, I thought the band was was very nice. In fact, you know, if you look at it, kind of mixed in your humidor, you'd swear it was La, La Gloria Cubana, uh, is kind of what the band reminded me of, and this is the Flor de Rain Maduro. Did I say that right? Flor de la Reine. That's a Dave Garofalo cigar. It is. And I think you sent this to me, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is the sink size. I think it's yep. a Robusto size. Yep. I really dug the cigar. Nice, crisp flavors. I swear there was a lot more Nicaraguan uh, tobacco in it because it had that like Nicaraguan, very crisp, clean kind of flavor to it. Um, and the broadleaf wrapper produced some just awesome flavors. I really, really like the cigar a, a lot. Will I, I, I'm not sure what you rated it. Um, I, you know, I, the ratings were kind of all over the charts uh, when you, you look online. Um, but I think this is a great cigar. The price point, I want to say, is like six dollars, seven dollars for the cigar. I think it's a really uh, reasonable price point. Um, great smoking cigar. Great construction. You know, nice flavors. Again, that broadleaf wrapper brought about some really awesome uh, flavors. Uh, you know, you got a little bit of that kind of mocha, a little bit of sweetness. Um, I like that. I rated a box split. I would, I would say it's somewhere between a fiver and a box split from when I smoked. It was a good cigar. I mean, I, you know, some of those, most of those cigars coming out of United Cigar Group are good cigars. Yeah. I've been, I've been pretty impressed with them. So, and that's what, Dave's, what, like, uh, Dave Garofalo's... Um, uh, consortium, I want to say, of retailers. Yeah, and it's he's basic. I think now he's taken all the brands national to whoever wants them. But that was originally what he was doing with that. Um, mm. But he's he's done uh, he's done some good cigars with there. They um, they're really under the radar. I haven't see, I haven't had a dog rocket out of out of that group yet. Yeah, no, this uh, 
Now, Barry, uh, Barry Stein rated the natural even better than the Maduro. He seemed yeah. to like the natural better than the Maduro. Yeah. And, you know, I, when I did see Barry's rating on it, I, hey, the first thing that's going to come to mind, he works for Dave, but yeah. uh, the cigars were good. The cigars were really good. Absolutely. Um, I, so, I mean, after smoking this one and then reading Barry's views, I want to try the natural now. Yeah, they're both good. I've had them both. Um, they're both really good. I'll even, you know, they look like, I'll tell you this, they look like Gloria Cubanas. They're actually smoking, you know, I put them right up there with them. I know they look like them, but, and I love Gloria Cubanas a lot. Yeah, yeah, the band definitely, I thought you sent me a Gloria Cubana. Yeah. Uh, and, and then I, yeah. I looked at the writing on it. I'm like, oh, no, that's not. Um, so it took me a while to get around to get it in my review cycle, but I'm glad I did. Yep. It was one of my surprises of the week. It's probably my, my smoke of the week this week. I yep. uh, was that one because it surprised me so much. Yep. No, we got the, I think Barry sent those a few weeks ago, so we got to thank him for that. Yeah. Uh, thank you. But yeah, it's like I said, they're doing some. They're doing <clears throat> some very good cigars um, out of that line. The Garofalo is another good cigar. It's a Connecticut. Um, nice I have Connecticut. one. Yeah. It, I have I'm it in the tor- I have it in the torpedo, and I have not smoked it yet. Yeah, it's a Perdomo. It's coming from Perdomo that cigar. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but I thought it was a good cigar as well. He's got a, a, a lot more lines than I thought. Yeah. yeah. When I visited there, I, I, I picked up a nice sampling of everything. So. Yeah, and I think what he's doing with Cigar Authority now and with Barry, I think it's getting the word out. Uh, Barry's actually done a good job of getting the word out with that. Mm. Yep. Back to you, Will. Um, my last cigar is, um, believe it or not, it's the last cigar I had in, my op, in, in one of my Abo Greatest Hit samplers because I got a couple more sitting around nice. but it was uh i actually went back and smoked the avo 88 which was the, so i went backwards from 13 mm-hmm. to one and then i went back and smoked the avo 88 just to see how it was and i love the avo 88 um i thought it was a cigar that if you had it when it first came out it was young but then it aged well um originally i had this as a fight chuck norris um i now put it as a box worthy I think this is the exact same cigar as what was released last year, so I think mm-hmm. they just had some leftover ones. Uh, I don't know if it's just maybe I've you know, grown accustomed to this cigar. It's not really a knock that maybe I just knocking it down from a Chuck Norris to a box is not bad. Uh, it still has a lot of great flavors. Uh, it's got a ton of complexity, this cigar. Um, it's, a, it's a medium to full abo, so it's going to be a little more amped up there in terms of that uh, great construction. Um, you get you get some of those avo herbal grassy notes, but you get a little bit of a chocolate note, a little bit of an orange note. Uh, it, I I like I think you know I'm actually gonna go back and try to rank all the avos, but I I would put the avo 88 and that sampler in the top five. It was very good. Nice. I I, I really enjoyed that cigar a lot. Cool. Um, last cigar on my list is the Arturo Fuente Opus X Perfection X no, or Perfection Number Four. This one comes from 2012 uh, out of my personal collection. And this is the Corona, Corona, Petit Corona or Corona size? I want to say this is the Corona size. The Petit Corona doesn't have a seat or sleeve on it, according according to my research. Uh, The Corona has the uh, seat or sleeve on it. This one had the seat or sleeve. You can see pictures in our Stogie's feed. Awesome cinnamon sweetness. Uh, nice spice, a touch of leather, like everything you would expect from a three-year-old Opus. Um, still packs a good amount of strength, tons of flavor, um, and it's, I mean, those are just all the reasons why I'd buy an entire box of these and just you know age them for three years and love smoking them. Some people don't have the patience necessarily um, to to buy those and age them for uh, three years, uh, but they seem to be in their smoking prime right now it was a great release in 2012 um i picked up a a a good amount in 2012 um probably like eight or so you know of this size uh in particular and uh after being patient and you know waiting my three years before i smoke them um i'm really you know at night when i just want to chill out for a little while this is a great size right because it doesn't take you forever to smoke it Um, if I just want to watch some TV, you know, in my workshop at home and have a cigar before bed, um, this is, this is a great go-to cigar for that. Um, because it still has a lot of that strength. It has some awesome sweetness and leather. I just, I love that, that mixing of flavors. You don't really find that in a lot of other cigars. If, I mean, there probably are no other cigars with this flavor profile of a, you know, three-year age, uh, three-year-old, uh, perfection number four. 
Uh, it's just fantastic. Um, I'm not sure what the price point was when I bought them. They weren't overly, you know, I didn't go like online and try and find them at a higher price point kind of thing. Um, I bought these when they, I think they, I want to say these probably came into Mr. J's uh, when they got their allotment. And I, what I do with these in all my Opus X is I take Ziploc bags and then I write with a Sharpie. Uh, you know, you don't have to be exact on the date. I just write spring. I think these were spring 2012 is what I wrote in the bag. Okay. Um, and then I know after three years that I can start dipping into them. And I try and keep a I'm, – I'm kind of anal because I'm an Opus X whore. I'm kind of <laughs> anal about – you know, I label them all. Um, and then I only smoke the ones that are at least three years old out of my collection. And then I – you know, when they come out to various retailers, I'll buy – uh, you know, I don't go buy boxes of Opus. I know, we, you know, we rate these box worthy, right? I, in all honesty, I don't typically go out and buy a whole box of Opus. You know, when they come into Mr. J's or other local retailers, I'll buy a, <coughs> a fiver of that size, a fiver of this size. If it's a size that I, I have never smoked before or I, I don't have any of, I might buy 10 of them if they let me. And again, I take those, I put them in a Ziploc bag. I write the date on it, and I typically wait three years before I smoke them. Um, and so as time goes on, you'll have this nice rotation where whatever you're smoking now is at least three years old. And I know that right. takes some patience, and it takes some budget to be able to you know, build up that collection. But I think it's well worth it because I really you know, I enjoy smoking them. And again, I'm not, you know, I'm not buying whole boxes of, of all these different sizes. Like I said, I, you know, I may buy five or eight, maybe ten in, in various sizes over the years. Uh, and it's a nice way to, to you know, keep a steady supply of, of Opus um, in your collection. Yeah, and when you really see them age out, uh, you really, you, you, you really, it's worth it. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Well, you don't want to wait too long. Uh, the original Opus X's, <clears throat> I think, are pretty aged out now. Yeah. Um, but three years is, uh, is, is a pretty good, pretty good mark. So maybe for our, uh, probably for our, our four-year anniversary show coming four up year. October. Is it three four or four years? Four. It's four years. Yep. Our four-year anniversary show, Will, I'll, I'll break out some of my, my oldest Opus X I got in the, in the humidor. We'll smoke some of that. Yeah, uh, that's gonna be the, that's gonna be epic. Yeah, that'd be good. I need some help smoking it, so. Then we have to do it. We have to, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Yep. Um, there is a contest for this show. There should be uh, a prize pack in there for episode one hundred and fifty-six. Um, we got a lot of great questions. I think based on the Tim Tim Ferriss uh, interview. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and we can't give away the whiskey, folks. Sorry. And we I can't. Mean, uh, Unfortunately, we can't. I mean, yeah. If you come here to studio and no one's looking, we might be able to give you a glass, but right. uh, that, that we can't give it away. On the, we can't mail you the whiskey, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, it sounds like they're pretty well distributed across the U.S. now and making more inroads as that goes on. So if uh, one of you guys could grab the 156 uh, prize pack, that would be great. What do we want to do for a question, Will? Well, obviously, we want to tie it with Tim's interview. Um, yes, that's a great question, Nick. Great question. What area Perfect. is the uh, distillery for Defiant Whiskey in? I thought this yep. was great. Um, he said, you know, the water, which is important. And I, I never knew this, how integral, like, they basically make beer, and then they distill the beer. Yeah. I, 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 I never realized that process. And he described it like... <clears throat> how different, you know, the differences between making beer that you drink and beer that you distill. Um, and, how, and important in the, the beer making process is the water. Um, and since they start with beer, it's very integral to the <clears throat> um, whiskey making process as well. I learned so much from Tim uh, about whiskey and distilling. Uh, yeah. It was a really eye opening experience for me. So, uh, yeah, I we really, we, yeah. I, Totally agree, um, and we really got to thank Tim because I mean, yes, he's a sponsor, but he also he actually flew up specifically for this, and everything else he was doing, I think, was revolving around visiting us. So yeah. we really appreciate that, by the way, because that's you know that's at a cost to him as well. So for a five pack of Hoya Red uh, Robustos, why, 
Wow, yeah. we still got those. <laughs> They've been sitting for a little while, actually. Juan's actually coming back on the show in November. That's awesome. Late October. Yeah, so it's like already a year almost. Yeah. Yeah, these are great cigars. I love smoking these. I almost hate to give these away as a prize pack because I, I yeah. really do like smoking them. It's a pretty mild, um, uh, kind of a good like morning, kind of midday smoke. Um, I really like and dis- these. And distributed by Drew Estate, by the way. So they are. Play- yes, they so are. So we're, yeah. we're showing them some love as well. Yep, we are. Yeah. Um, so this is a Hoya Red Robusto. It's a five and a quarter by 50. You get five of them. Uh, they're uh, sealed up, all ready to go with the uh, Bovita pack in there. So Absolutely. Uh, we'll send those out. Send your answer to the show at stogiegeeks.com. In what area of North Carolina are the, uh, is the uh, Defiant Whiskey distilled? Looking for the area. Yep. Send that answer. So North Carolina is not the answer because I, I just I said that it, we're looking for the specific area in North Carolina uh, where the uh, whiskey is distilled. So. Yeah, and by the way, we're still taking some contests from last week. So get yeah, them in, or those. the packs are gonna go back to someone else. That's right. Yeah. Listen yeah, to, to <clears throat> listen to the show, watch the show. You can do all of that on yeah. the StoyGeeks.com website. You can subscribe to the show, whether you're using um, uh, iOS uh, from an Apple device, whether you're using Android, any kind of podcast catcher. Um, all the information on how to subscribe to all of our shows are on the StoeyGeeks.com website. Yep. Thanks, everyone, for watching. That concludes this episode. And uh, I won't see everyone next week because I won't be here next week. Uh, but we get a full schedule after that. So thanks, everyone, for watching. See you next week. See you two weeks from now.